So hello, everyone. Uh, hi, LeapFroggers. Hi, everyone. So talk of my title is Git can do that for now. So the talk title was a lie. And uh, I went through a lot of iterations before I uh, came, came through a perfect title for this talk. So first, I thought of no enough Git endurance to be dangerous. This is most probably in your card. It's wrong. <laughs> nope. And then I thought of Lord of the Rings style Git adventure. But come on, I'm lazy. I don't do designing much. So nope. And then I thought of Git can do that. But seriously, Git can do everything. Why, why do I mention some things only? So nope. So now the talk of title is advanced Git. So why did I choose advanced Git is I want every one of you to know uh, system design looking at Git because uh, we are here all are web developers and uh, web, web, kind, web uh, development is kind of bloated these days. It's, it's really hard. And what we can learn from Git is the way to efficiently design our software. Like there are porcelain plumbing, which I'll come to it later. So basically, GS developers must uh, listen this carefully. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'm a nerd, so basically my talk will be very much deep into technical details, so don't expect any such fun. <laughs> so I'm Pratik Karki, I'm a programmer. Uh, I write programs uh, almost every waking hours of my life, and LeapFrog pays for me for eight hours or so. <laughs> so uh, this is the talk, this is the basis of my talk, like how many of you people can relate to the left one? The left XKCD uh, comic, like Git is too hard, you just throw it away and you just do uh, things. No one? Basically, you find Git useful. Uh, but before that, let's ask uh, how many of you, of you have used Git as a second uh, version control system or third version control system? That is, you have either used subversion or other things. Nice. Okay, I guess for more than six years plus developers are using that. Uh, so, so basically, I will be dwelling with more about Git. So Git's design is basically porcelain and plumbing. So porcelain is the portion where you users see, and uh, Git users see, and they just interact through Git, like Git clone, uh, other Git, even Git rebase is porcelain. And plumbing is the portion where most of the Git developers do, and they look at objects, and they look at Merkle, how to emphasize on that Merkle tree, how to design the internal uh, abstractions and other internal uh, data structures to efficiently uh, function the porcelain, because Git was uh, effect effectively designed as a backend system. So what Linus thought of was uh, design a backend system that is design, design only plumbing sex, uh, uh, sessions, uh, sections, and uh, front-end uh, front implementations can be built on it, so he doesn't have to care about it much. But uh, Junio and other contributors kind of built it into a whole platform. So let's dive into plumbing. So what actually is a Git object? So Git is a content address file system. What, is, what I mean by that is, in Git uh, file system, is, it's kind of very different, because whatever your content, the hash key is generated by it. It's called blob, and uh, the content drives your hash keys. So in other file systems, like uh, you, uh, you will care about the file path, where the file is uh, situated, the file mode, and everything. But in Git, it doesn't uh, care for uh, blob. And uh, Git, is not a, uh, Git is not really a key value store, although most, uh, uh, most documents mention it, it, it as a key value store, but it's a value value store because your content derives a value, which uh, the value, the hash key value, points to the values inside the Git file system. So it's a value value store. And uh, we'll be looking at plumbing commands like Git hash object, which checks into, which, uh, turns, which turns existing file into a Git object, and then we'll again see those uh, file object and uh, generate a uh, We'll see the hash key and generate a Git object to that file. So this is the object model for the Git. Up upper level is commit, and uh, lower level the square box are blob, and uh, the mid layers are all trees. So a uh, commit can give you uh, detail of every uh, your every uh, commit is basically a snapshot of your working uh, area. So if you know the hash key of commit, you will know the current scenario of your whole working uh, tree. So for this, uh, I used the main Git uh, repository, and I, was, uh, uh, I checked the first log, and I uh, asked it to give me the 40, uh, 40 hash key of, uh, of every uh, commit. So it, it has given me uh, the first log's first hash key. That is 40x characters. 
And this was uh, present uh, while, the, uh, while I was uh, designing the slide. So if I again do cat file and I just pretty print it, so it gives me the object from earlier, which the hash key was derived from the content. OK, so if I, if I look back, and if I just type the first four characters of the hash key, then it will just show me the, all the structures, because commit is at the top level, and there's tree, and there's blob. So basically, what happened here is the four characters uh, are, are linked up. Uh, four, four characters of the hash key are linked up, and the blob, trees, and commits should be the same, because you want your commit to know every structure of your working tree. So a blob contains file com uh, components. Blobs are really simple. They don't have any logic. They just look at your content. They just generate a hash key, and they're done. So if two, if two file contents are same, a blob can be same. But, uh, but, a com uh, but a commit can be different, because uh, I'll come into that later. And uh, tree contains folder contents. It will give you uh, the read, uh, read mode and uh, the, all the Unix um, uh, file permissions. And tree is basically the snapshot of the repository. So if I just look at the graph of that time, so it will show me that upper level is merged and uh, there are some commits being there. So this is a Merkle tree representation. So Git follows Merkle tree representations because uh, it is only the effective way to handle SHA-1-based hashing algorithm. So Merkle, what happens in a Merkle tree is you don't need to know about every hash key of every trees or every blobs. You just need to know the hash key of commit and the whole the, after knowing the hash key of the commit, it can derive the whole uh, scenario of current working structure. And uh, for further read, uh, you can just scan this uh, QR code. Uh, there is also some concept about Bloom filters here, if you want to know about it more. So identical commit is only stored once. Commits are not diffs. They're generated. So a commit contains root tree the list of parent commits, it contains the commit message. That why, that's why the blobs can be same, but the commit is always different, because it, it incorporates lots of information. And uh, this, this basically saves you from SA1 collisions and other cases. And uh, if I look at a diff of uh, two Git versions, so file renames are detected dynamically, as you can see from the uh, screenshot. So what, what are the things that in the dot .git? So if you just uh, pass, the, uh, pass the thing to the uh, uh, pipeline and uh, create a git hash object and uh, use the standard input, so what uh, the generated Shaki's first two characters are always the object's directory names. So they, uh, they drive the, what, are, what the objects are stored. They kind of contain all the objects. And blob is stored in objects. Now pack files and deltas. So, Git's objects are stored. That uh, these uh, Git's objects are compressed. So basically, what happens is you, uh, this is space is cheap. So while working, we our file sizes are a uh, lot bigger. Git objects are all uh, uncompressed, and we have a lo lot of things happening in our working tree. But when sending it over a network, that is not efficient design. So Git compresses it. Uh, Git, uh, Git compresses it using Jetlib algorithms, Jetlib compressions, and uh, it only sees the deltas. That is changes between. Two, two snapshots, like it will see a snapshot and it will see the current working tree's structure and it will just compare the deltas and it will only push the deltas and the, uh, and the object so to effectively manipulate the, effectively manage the network cases. So if you have too many objects, you won't see it in .git because um, the too many objects, the objects will be stored in packs. Like in the .git directory, you'll see pack and there will be all your objects will be stored in it, compressed using Jetlib compression. So this is basically a git data transfer commands. You, you know it. OK. Uh, branch, a branch is a pointer to a particular commit. Uh, if different changes are happening, the pointer gets changed to other things. Like uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you're on different branches, it, uh, a branch is basically just pointing to a commit. So head, head is a pointer which points to the name of current branch. So if you're, if you're in current branch master, your head point will point you to the name of the current branch. And uh, what happens if you, if you start to point at commit, then it will be a case of detached head, which is like you're in a uh, limbo kind of state. Because it's, it's not, Git, would want, Git won't recognize you're working there. It, uh, the gar it, uh, garbage collector will come up and clean up all your working places at that point. So 
basically, head will let, know, uh, let Git know where you are currently and what your next parent will be, what the next parent of the object will be. So uh, there, uh, from Git 2.23, we have we are saying, uh, there's a new kind of command called Git switch, which is basically much more uh, much more syntactically better than Git checkout, and uh, it's more it's more fault tolerant than uh, Git checkout. Git, uh, you should try Git switch. So if I just look at the Git head uh, when I'm in master bands, you can see the reference is pointing to the head of the master. So if I again uh, go to switch to Git main using uh, main t using git switch command, it will point to the ref head. And uh, if I check out uh, a commit, it will it is just it's taking me to the detach edge state, uh, which is an experimental state for me to make changes. So uh, recently uh, with switch, it was it is much easier to just go back to your original head state, original head state. So what happens to a commit in detach head? If you make a commit in detach head, what, what, what happens to it? Uh, do they remain for there? Does it get, get larger? Well, they are called dangling commits. And uh, the uh, Git's garbage collector is efficiently designed to just clean up those dangling commits. OK, these are some of the commands I use. I find it pretty useful in uh, Stash. So the first one is. Um, when I'm cont frequently context switched between tickets, like whenever the QA comes and uh, do this ticket uh, first, and when he asks me to do it, and I have to just clean up my work entry, I just save the, all the index, and uh, I even keep the include untracked file in a stash so that uh, uh, I can later revisit it and uh, do it. And there are different things, like uh, you can look at the list of stash, and you can uh, uh, look things at stash. Is everyone here familiar with stash workflow? Raise your hands who is not familiar with Stash. OK, uh, Stash is basically, um, when in, a Git, in Git, you can't uh, clone, uh, you, sorry, you can't uh, check out any branch or you can't change your uh, working tree until and unless your objects are all either committed or either removed. So Stash, what, uh, what Stash does is it saves your current work tree uh, in, a, in its uh, memory so that you can later revisit it and you can again, again get your uh, work tree back. So how are Morse commits different than commits? So you, you will see the Morse commits are they're basically under the hood. They're pretty same. So this is what happens when a new Morse comes, which a feature trip goes, and master tape, and new Morse commit arises. It's, it just binds your two commits. Uh, you, you might have seen fast forward happening while merging. So when there are no commits on the base branch, that is, your base branch hasn't moved, the master branch hasn't moved, and your feature branch has, was created, uh, there's no point uh, in doing uh, merge commit. There's no point in merge commit. So what Git will do is it, it efficiently does is a mass fast forward, uh, fast forward merging. That is, it will create no merge commits. So this is what happens. And uh, there's a concept of three-way merge. So uh, Git cannot perform a fast forward merge when both both branches have diverged. So what it does is it finds it finds the common ancestor between the two uh, branches, and it will just uh, try to manipulate the uh, ancestor and uh, create a symbolic join, uh, create a commit which will uh, be a symbolic join between the two branches. And there is also a thing called git merge no fast forward. This is for people who want, who want to maintain the merge commits, uh, like they want to only merge certain things in a, a, a particular time of the day, and uh, what they want is they want to record like it has been merged every 8 a.m. every day. So they would want no fast forward. So even if the base branch and the feature branch has been diverse, the index will be merged. Uh, to, and to signify that, a merge commit will be created, even though there is no diversion. So merge, uh, merge conflicts. So I won't dwell into manual merge conflicts, because um, you guys already know how to fix those. So what we'll be doing, uh, dealing is looking at merge strategies. So first thing is, you should always remember this commit. This will, uh, this command, this command will show you like what your, what, what files are creating uh, merge conflicts uh, in uh, looking at the logs. And um, when you're, when you're merging things in the back end, there are different operations happening. Like here, you can see when you're doing, uh, when you're, uh, when you're just pulling a branch and you're doing things, that is you're doing front end stuffs. In back end, there are merge strategies happening. So uh, if, you're, if your branch is not fast forwarded, uh, that is your branches have not changed, it will use just basic 
merge, resolve merge, that is, it will check branch one and branch two. It will try to do a three-way merge, or it will check to see if there is a no, not much divergence, then you can just uh, take that. And uh, there is also a recursive branch, uh, branch uh, recursive uh, merges. So this was uh, technically used by Linux kernel uh, developers a lot. And there are different uh, cases here. You can uh, learn about this from uh, the manual. And uh, if, you, if you have multiple branches, so how do you merge it? Uh, you use octopus merge strategy. So octopus merge strategy binds, binds all the heads, and it will create, um, uh, binds all the head, and it will create your uh, common, uh, it will try to create a common ancestor. And if, if there is a more, more of a manual merging case, then it will just error out, and you have to manually manipulate it. But when you want to bind uh, multiple heads and multiple branches, you need to use octopus merge, otherwise you'll be lost. Um, this all things can be, you can check out the manual, as the organizers are pointing me that I have less time. So a Git rigidity is a, a really important tool. Uh, um, how many of you have heard of Git rigidity? All right, cool. Leap progress, I've heard. Uh, Git rigidity is a reuse recorded resolutions. So when you, when you resolve a conflict, Git rigidity just records your resolutions, and it will apply to next commit when you're merging something. So it basically does is this. Uh, when you you have to first enable it because um, even though it's, it has been there for long, it is still considered experimental by the Git core team. And uh, when you it's config, it will be recorded, and next time it will automatically apply those things. So if you if you try to, um, I wouldn't suggest most uh, beginners or uh, most people to use just Git reset. And if you even screw up Git reset, you can just look at Ori's head because Ori's head is the thing. When you when you're currently at head, when you're when you're pointing at current head. Uh, the head position is moved from Ori's head, so Ori's head is the previous position of your pointer. So if you just if you if you screw up git reset, if you git reset to the previous origin head, Ori's head, that is, then you can easily go back to the place before you screwed it up. Uh, for safe reasons, use git revert. Okay, let's try trouble. I'm going to go fast. <laughs> git commit amend. Uh, most people might know this. It is uh, it will just uh, amend the previous commit. The commit happened just now. And um, for, for earlier commits, you can do is git commit fix up, and you can just fix up to the uh, shaky of the commit, like uh, even the commits you used, uh, commit, uh, committed like two weeks ago. And you can use uh, auto squash with revis. What it does, it, it will just align your to do file to um, uh, make, it, make it to merge it into to do file. So what happens here is, so if, you, if I just want to uh, write a blog about uh, Python, and if I wanted to fix up um, that blog, which I did a bit earlier, it will create a fix up commit. And then when I use auto squash, it will just find the place where which commit, uh, the which commits fix up was that, and it will, re uh, it will rearrange itself using auto squash flag. So uh, this was really useful uh, tool. Uh, this uh, reverse, uh, this uh, tool, I find it really useful because if I have to reverse and if I have to check where, which uh, which commit might break my uh, tests and other cases, uh, I just use reverse exec and uh, I'll run tests and over the commits I've selected, and uh, after uh, it will check, it will uh, run tests after each commit, and if if any of those tests fail, then it will uh, just stop reverse. And this is the golden rule written by Linus Torvalds. Uh, never, never rewrite public history. Your history should be readable. And uh, you, you should clean up your private tree. You should never, ever push your dirty private tree into a public. If it goes to a public and if, you don't, if it doesn't have your sign-off, then it's not yours. And never merge upstream code at random points. Now, tips and tricks. Tips. So um, this is quite useful. Always use, uh, uh, you might uh, find it useful, git pull rebase to just fetch update your local branch. If, you, if your branch has a diverse uh, somewhat from base branch, you can just use this command, and it will uh, pull up from those, uh, uh, pull up from the master branch, and you're come, uh, you're, uh, you won't have merge commit, but your commits will uh, align to the top of the, your branch. So uh, never use git push f, push, uh, push, uh, push dash f, because uh, it's kind of scary when you when you when you push your core, when you push your branch, uh, and uh, you find uh, you find that you must rebase it. And after rebasing, if you just f force push it, then what you're trying to do is you're just removing every index and you're pushing everything, uh, you're destroying every comments, every objects, and you're pushing new things on top of it. 
it's kind of really scary because you don't if 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 it in a, if it's in the hand of an incompetent developer, it can be really troublesome. So what uh, Force with Lease does is it will just check out, uh, it will just compare, uh, do atomic uh, commit and swap with your previously fetched uh, branch. That is the branch you have just diverged from. It will just uh, check uh, the atomic. It will do com uh, atomic commit and uh, checks, and uh, it will just look at the fetch. And if at the, if uh, it just checks that if your change. It really ch checks whether your change should do what you are trying it to do. And there's um, ORIZ about it. So if you want to undo it, again, you're, you have your friend ORIZ. And uh, you should use git reflog. If, you, if uh, git commits are kept around two weeks, so if, you're, if you kind of screwed up uh, around any time of the, those, those space, you can just use git reflog. It will show you the, um, the, the time history of your every commit. So, in, in Reflog, you should mind that head at three is different because um, it, it will just uh, uh, calculate the moves rather than it will just calculate the state. So if you just look at Reflog, it will show you all the history of things happening, and you can just go to that head at that time, and you can um, fix, your, uh, fix errors if you introduce it. Another is Git grep, which is a really awesome tool. So uh, Git grep uses uh, regex to source the repo, and you, have, you can even search the staging area. And you can manipulate it using um, adding line numbers, heading, break, etc. You must really play with this. And uh, Git cherry pick, most of you might know about this. Cherry pick is when you want to pick up only commits, which you want in a branch. And this is one of my favorite tools, Blame. Where I find it <laughs> useful to blame programmers and start a fight. <laughs> so uh, this command, I find it really useful. Blame, um, ignore white space. Uh, detect moved uh, or copied lines and uh, detect code. And again, I can use uh, an awesome tool, uh, diff filter. You should really read about diff filter because diff filter lets you manipulate lots of things and you can check diffs. Like even uh, the deleted files can be really tracked uh, using git log diff filter and uh, you can check out, uh, check the deleted file and you can even extract the deleted file back. And uh, these are some use cases of git blame. You can even uh, check out uh, whether which functions happens, uh, which function uh, started from dev get, and uh, check with the occurrence of dev. You can embed your programming uh, uh, programming languages uh, thing uh, res using Regex. And uh, another important tool is Git bisect. Git bisect. Uh, Git bisect checks whether which commit of uh, which commit introduced uh, any issues. So there are two ways to fix errors. So what you, one one way is you can reverse it. You can go to early stages and you can just uh, run test every time commits are uh, replayed on top. But that uh, better than that, Git bisect, Git bisect can be better than that because it uses binary source to optimize for tests and it was it was used to find it is used to find the commits which broke your Thing. So you, what you do is you use git bisect start and you just give your bad uh, shaky and the good shaky where you know that uh, tests haven't broken at this state. And um, you just start it and if the test passes you can say git bisect good, otherwise git bisect bad. And uh, for automatic operations you can use git bisect run command arguments and uh, it will give just either success which is execute zero or fail. So. Uh, I talked a lot about uh, plumbing and uh, some porcelain things, which uh, kind of relate with things. So how did I know about all these stuffs? Uh, I'm, I'm the top 100 contributor to Git uh, of, of the 1,000 uh, thousand contributors. <laughs> so this, is, this was my first patch, thanks to Summer of Code. Uh, it helped me really to get into Git. This was my first patch, first uh, microproject patch. And uh, I'm the top 25 contributors of 2018 um, of Git. So if I, use, if I look start log and check the logs. And uh, Git Revis, uh, I, re I rewrote it in built-in C, and it's really performant. And Windows users should really thank me, because uh, previously, uh, when Revis operations used to take four to five minutes, now it only takes uh, about one minute or even less if you're revising it properly. <laughs> so recently. Uh, recently, after being a top 25 contributor, I was uh, invited to Git Virtual Contributor Summit, where all the Git core teams uh, kind of got around and discussed. We discussed it on Zoom. This is Pef of GitHub. He's the maintainer of Git at GitHub. So if any features comes around GitHub, this is the man. 
So lastly, I want to thank awesome Git community because Git community has taught me about systems like how to design your backend, how to really uh, use your uh, expose your API properly so the front end can pick up on it, and how can you can make an isomorphic applications and how can you really design a software so that uh, there's no regressions and there are no uh, issues which which will really happen later because Git's co uh, code review process is really, really, really tough process and until and unless every maintainers or core team come into a consensus that it's good, it doesn't, go, it doesn't move much because they, the team values for, uh, portability and uh, stability rather than uh, adding some awesome features. And I want to thank uh, Joe. He was a, a mentor uh, who helped me during my uh, contributions to Git uh, while writing Rivets. And he's a Git for Windows maintainer, and uh, he's Git core, it's Git, Git core team mentor, uh, maintainer, uh, uh, Git core team, and uh, he's a Git core team. And uh, additionally, uh, when Git config was designed, he and Linus were uh, the main developers working on Git config. So Git config is basically everything handling about Git. So thanks, and uh, follow Greta. Always save your climate. Anyhow, uh, work on it, and try to conserve your climate. Thank you.